What's up guys, David one two two. it's List Day. Ah yes, List Day. And today we're looking at the top five worst cards in the brand new set coming out, uh, Chaos Impact. This set's genericness name knows no bounds. Like if you ask me, when when does Chaos Impact come out? You And you had like really no idea much about modern sets, you would have been like, I don't know, GX? <laughs> Sounds like every other Yu-Gi-Oh set ever. However, um, I will give this set some props. Some of the like weird, uh, obscure pack filler cards have some really neat artwork. So that's kind of cool. However, also a lot of them are bad. So those are the ones we're gonna be looking at today. Now, I think I'm gonna start doing top fives for worst lists uh, from now on, just because I tend to yammer a lot about, about bad cards. <laughs> so like, you know, it might be good to kind of to, to trim it down a little bit because I, I will never be able to keep myself under like 20 minutes talking about 10 cards. Absolutely not. And uh, if you think some of the cards in this list didn't deserve to be in the top five, or there was another card you're like, oh yeah, that was definitely worse, make sure you uh, join the Discord. That's where we make these videos. You guys help me with the list. It's not just all me. And if you totally did agree, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And smash that like button. <laughs> but anyway, let's get going. Number 10 is uh, Bringer. Bringer. This level 7 water sea serpent monster with 1,000 attack and 2,600 defense has the following effect. When this card is normal or special summoned, you can target one water monster in your graveyard. This card gains attack equal to that monster's attack in the graveyard. Until the end of the turn. Okay, um, that is not great, but uh, let's keep going. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one water monster you control. It gains 1,000 attack until the end of the turn. If this was like a battle phase quick effect kind of hand trap, it might be okay. However, uh, that summon effect is really not going to go off very easily because it's a level 7 with no inherent special summoning ability. But uh, the other effect is actually the one that it, it, you would probably conceivably use. Because it doesn't say from the field to the graveyard, just when it's sent to the graveyard. Meaning you can mill it out of the deck with like Foolish Burial, or discard it out of your hand with something like uh, Swap Frogs or Mermail shenanigans. And it's probably those two decks are the only two decks you'd ever consider using the card in, because they have a reliable discard engine, I guess. Why is it so noisy outside? Is that detour by my house. However, a thousand attack power boost is just a win more move in your mermails. In frogs, you'd rather be able to use this during the battle phase, which is gonna be hard to do, because your toad's not very big, and your your Marincess kinda cover the battle weakness anyway. I don't know. It just doesn't have much of a home. Bayonetta, the what is this thing called? Bayonetta, the Baneful Barrel. Oh, that is such a TCG name, it hurts. Awesome, awesome artwork aside, like I said, some of the artwork in this in this set looks like it's from an entirely different game. I I don't know. This level one dark zombie with 500 attack and donut defense, which, you know, that's pretty solid. A darks with donuts for their defense. And zombies, you know, it's just there's some, some cards for that. That's a following effect. Worship turn, you can target one phase of monster your opponent controls. They it loses a thousand attack power for uh, each monster that your opponent controls. It's an ignition effect for what is essentially wall of disruption. Granted, a thousand for each monster your opponent controls is probably gonna zero out anything you target. Because as long as they have more than one monster, you're you're drastically weakening whatever you're pointing at. However, uh, there's no way of getting it on board by itself. Like you need to use your other zombie support to to to, to get this thing on board, which feels like a really weird use of your Mizukis or your Call of the Mummy. And would you honestly ever one for one this thing? I don't think so. Great artwork though, and it could conceivably cheese a win, but it it's just you'd never run it. Oh yeah, Tyrant Farm. Tyrant Farm's a normal spell card with the following effect. Tribute one effect monster, special summon one non-effect monster with the same type and attribute from your graveyard. You can only use one of these once per turn. A normal spell, neg one version of Emerald's effect. Um, I'm not exactly sure why you'd ever want to do this. Uh, replacing your monster with an ability with one in your graveyard that does not. It does say non-effect, so it doesn't necessarily need to be a normal monster, although most of the times a monster you can actually summon from your graveyard is probably a normal monster. Unless you 
Properly summoned Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. The only use for this card I can possibly think of is in a Gemini deck? You Gemini summon one of your Geminis and then <laughs> summon uh, one that's not Gemini summoned from your graveyard. And the fact that it, it, it requires you to keep the same attribute and type of, of the sacked monster really limits its use. I, I think its best home is Red Eyes? Blue Eyes? How would you run that though? This is just one of those cards where it's like, you can put it in this deck, it will be able to resolve its ability, but I don't know why you'd want to. Here's a cue card. The World Legacy. The World. Just the World Legacy. The whole concept of that one card. The World Legacy is a continuous spell card with the following effect. You can only troll one of these. Okay. Each time a face-up level 5 or higher monster gets sent from the field to the graveyard, place one counter on this card. Ew. Counters. Max 7. If this card's got its 7 counters, you can send this thing to the graveyard. Special summon a Cybers Link monster from your extra deck. You can put this card in the It's Never Going to Do That Ever category. This do nothing card requires you to send seven level five or higher monsters from the field to the graveyard. If it was just monsters during a wombo combo link play, maybe, maybe I could see it going off mid combo. But like level five or higher? Uh, yeah, that's never gonna work. It's gonna take you like two or three turns to accumulate the counters because it's like, oh, my, my world chalice is the one card that actually accomplishes the, the activation condition. It's just never gonna work. All, all that hubbub just to get a free link monster. It's What you do is you, you MST it when it gets to six, just to watch your opponent be like, ah, I overextended, ah. Card's bad. We have an honorable mention today. I'm not sure if it's a dishonorable mention or an honorable mention, because I'm not really sure how the card works. How Yu-Gi-Oh. And it's Boom Pauline. Boom Pauline. <laughs> it's a ridiculous name for a card. This continuous trap card has the following effect. Choose an unused monster zone. If an effect monster is special summoned to that zone, return this card and that monster to the hand. Uh, most cards that say monster zone were eroded to main monster zone. However, this is a new card, so it would imply that, if I'm understanding it properly, you could, in theory, target a, an extra deck zone. Basically means that the first link play your opponent makes is uh, just gonna nag them like crazy thus floodgating them pretty substantially. If this was continuous continuous and just let you keep pointing at that zone and just kept bouncing, it actually might be kind of broke. Because <laughs> depending on the deck they're playing, they might not have a non-effect link monster that they can go into first. So, it feels kind of good. However, if you can only point at main monster zones, if that's how it's ruled, uh, then the card's actually really bad because your opponent can literally play around it and that's, that's just never good. <laughs> you point at LP's LP's arrow, right? Is that, is that the one you would do it with? I don't remember. I haven't played against guard dragons in like six months. Still doesn't feel great. So it's either really good or really bad. I mean, you could just play Compulse and not have to worry about it. And before we get to number one, we do have some sponsors. The first sponsor we have today is TCG Player. Believe it or not, these guys are in Syracuse and I'm from Rochester, so they are, they are a like hour max trip from my hometown. So like, they're kind of local for me. That's kind of cool. I got my links down in the below description thing. So you guys can click that if you want to help the channel. If you guys want a custom cloth play mat, you can go over to MetaMat's website and use my promo code TROLLTHEMETA to get like 10% off your purchase. Helps the channel, helps me. So you can load up my cards and load up my mats. Feels good. Wham, bam, boom, number one, fam. Yo, Soul Levy. Yes. Soul Levy is a continuous trap card with the following effect. You can only control one. Each time your opponent special summons a monster, they mill the top three cards of their deck to, to the graveyard. It's not even cool banish. It's, it's to the graveyard. At uh, best, this is part of a mill strategy. At worst, you are helping your opponent set up <laughs> in the middle of their wombo combo. <laughs> They're like, special summon, mill three. Ah, oh, effect, effect. <laughs> Bonus points if you played against Burning Abyss. I'm not even sure what to say about it because it's like, at, 
In best case scenario, it's part of a non-viable win condition. Worst case scenario, you're shooting yourself in the foot. I could see it being used in a mill strategy if we got better mill support in the future and more of it, because I could I could see it getting stuck in the deck because it's just one more card to help that strategy. But as it stands, we don't have very many good mill cards. I think that's because uh, we as a player base tend not to like win conditions like that. So this card's just kind of really bad. It's also continuous and a trap, so it's slow and your opponent can just remove it from the field if it's somehow actually a problem. Or True Draco can just pop it just for the fun of it. <laughs> Stop it! That detour is fun. But anyway guys, that was the worst cards in Gennaro set number 476. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, there's actually like another 10 cards that could have been in on this top 5, so uh, totally put your suggestions in the comments below because this set's got a lot of really weird cards. They're not necessarily bad, they're just like really weird. Remember guys, if you don't troll the meta who will, it'll probably be Boom Pauline. <laughs>